Hi, you guys. Welcome back to another sew along series. This time I'm going to be making the Seamwork Chantel dress. It is a super cute little body skimming button up collared dress with a little sleeve option. It really is so adorable and really a great transitional piece for the fall. This is our episode zero. This is all the stuff that we're going to need to do before actually sewing. I like to keep the sew along to sewing, but I also want to do um, some of the prep work too and give you guys some of my best tips and tricks for fitting this pattern, the alterations that I made to this pattern. We're gonna talk about fabrication, including the fabric that I'm using and some other options that you have, gathering up the other supplies that you need, as well as all of the prep work that we need to do before we actually start sewing with the sew along, which kicks off with episode one. So let's get to prepping this one. Okay, so when we are talking about fit, for seam work, we're going to come down to fit details, page five. And you want to notice that their block is drafted for a C cup. The straight sizes are for a C cup and a height of 5'8", and the plus sizes are a double D cup and a height of 5'9". So no matter which of the blocks you choose, double check your cup size and your height. Thankfully, I am close enough to a C cup, especially like with a bra on. Um, so that's going to be okay for me. Um, and then I, but I'm only 5'5", five five, so I am going to need to reduce the height some. So I'm just going to make a note of that in my Fast Fit workbook. And then we're going to come down and they already um, tell you the ease in the garment. So that's one less thing you have to calculate when you're working with the seam work pattern. So you can go ahead and write those numbers down here. You can go ahead and write your measurements down here. And then you can go ahead and write down the intended fit as well before ever even doing anything else. You can write down one, four, and five, the sections. Okay, and then we're gonna come down to the body measurement chart, which is right here. And we're gonna compare our measurements to the body chart. So um, I was closest to a size 10, technically sizing down, but that's okay. Uh, we will factor that in later. We will factor that in later. And then for the waist, I was technically closest to a size 14, but I don't like doing more than one size grade for every for every horizontal line on the body. So from bust to waist, I don't like doing more than one size grade. I don't like going from a 10 to a 14 bust to waist. Bust to hip, 10 to 14 is fine. That's two sizes for two horizontal measurements on the body, okay? So I said, all right, there's princess seams, there's six seams all the way around this body, all the way around this pattern. If you wanna look at the line drawing up here, you can see we've got side seams, one, and then the center front, so one, two, three, four, and then the center back as well, uh, five, six. So if I took half inch, if I took quarter inch seam allowances just at the waist, I'd be able to earn back three inches right there. Plus, we've got five and three quarter inches of pattern ease already. That's already kind of a lot. So I know I have a couple of inches to play around with there as well. So I, I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're going to make the 12, even though it's going to be technically too small, and we're going to fudge with the seam allowances in order to get it to fit. That's what seam allowances are for, you guys. They're for fitting. Don't just use the seam allowances or sew at the seam allowance and then just surge it off every single time. Use it for fitting. That's what it's there for, okay? All right, and so then for the hip, I was um, gonna do the size 14, again, to honor the one size grade in between each horizontal measurement. Okay, so then the finished measurement chart is right below the body chart. You can see that right here. And we are comparing size 10, 12, and 14. We're writing down the finished measurements for those sizes right here. Now we're going to compare uh, three and five, all right? We want the intended fit, what the pattern designer kind of hopes <laughs> that this will fit like, what their plan was for us, and the finished measurements. We want those to try and be kind of close. So close enough on the bust, right? For the waist, though, I knew I was going to be way off because I'm technically sizing um, a size too small. But remember, I have those three inches if I take a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to do that and then know that I'm just going to be four and three quarter inches at the waist ease. And that's fine. That's plenty. You could even go three and three quarters, two and three quarters even. You know, it's it's 
that's pretty generous at the waist. For the hip, okay, so always for the hip, I was like, you know, when I'm looking at this pattern, I'm like, these are cute, right? But they're a little bit professional. They're a little bit office appropriate. They're a little bit kind of buttoned up, or no pun intended. Um, I wanted something a little bit cuter and flirtier and sweeter even. And so I always wanted to increase the um, circumference of the hem to kind of create a little bit more of a flared skirt here at the bottom. So that's what I did. Seamark has an incredible tutorial about how to increase the width of a skirt, of a top, of a sleeve, whatever you're working on. I'll have that linked below. Um, and believe it or not, well, you might believe it, you can't just, sadly, just add to the side seams. There's a great article, I'll link that in the description box as well, for why you can't do that. It's a little bit more sciencey than I wanna get into here, but the short answer is you can't just do that. And I'm sorry, but it doesn't work out right and doesn't end up looking right. It distributes the, the hem in a weird way and you really need to be adding it into the panels. So I did a mixture of both. I added to the side seams, I added to each seam, and then I also cut up from the hem to the waistline. The waistline ends up being um, these like first notches on your side seams right here, just above the pocket uh, dots. Uh, so I ended up cutting up, you can see right here, cut up through the hem and then cut up through the waistline, creating a little like uh, hinge right here. And then you can kick it out just a little bit. I did half inch on each one. Um, this ends up folding over itself by like, I don't even know, like not even a millimeter. It's very, very small. Um, so now I've added an inch to this panel, but that's technically two inches, right? Because we make two of these. Same thing for the side front. I have two of them here. And then for the center panels, I only did one. So you can see I cut up just one time here. Okay, so all the way around, I think I ended up adding one, two, three, four, five, six inches all the way around on my hem. Now, once I did that, I noticed that the side seams, let me find the side pieces, um, were going to be a little bit too curvy. When they created their little their design to make it a little bit straighter, you have to add in a little bit of a curve here for the, uh, for your hips. But because I was adding so much at the hem, technically adding also some at the hip line, which is right here, I didn't need that much of a belt. It was gonna create, I don't know, a weird like bubble at my side seams. So I simply just straightened those out, okay? so. The goal here for you guys as you are looking at what I did is not to just mimic exactly me. Um, unless you're exactly my size, like you're exactly my measurements and you wanna just, you know, do the exact same thing I did. The goal here with this video is for you guys to start to critically think about the pattern's design, what you like, what you're comfortable in, and start to feel more confident in making the kind of adjustments that you need to make to create the garments that you know you're gonna love. And that's what I was able to do here. So I've got all my measurements done. I'm not gonna go in, I've got all my adjustments done. I'm not gonna go into like super, super great detail about exactly how I graded and all that kind of stuff. You guys figure out what you wanna do for your dress and knock it out. Um, but I do wanna point out that for your so for the bust up, I made a size 10, okay? Remember? So that also means that for the collar pieces, you're making a size 10, um, mine are right here. And for the sleeve, you're making a size 10. Now, I'm looking at the sleeve on her, and it looks great. I'm looking at the sleeve on her, and I'm thinking, there's gonna be some issues with the bicep. I just know that there are. I tried to figure it out on the flat pattern myself, and I just didn't get, you can see all the blue lines. I was, I marked my seam allowances. I was trying to figure it out. I think the problem is going to be the height of the sleeve cap. I have plenty of fabric, so I might be recutting mine to add, honestly, like maybe an inch to the sleeve cap, which also means I'm dropping the arm size on these pattern pieces. 
Again, kind of an advanced situation. So if you're new to pattern adjusting, just make the sleeve that they gave you. <laughs> Hers doesn't look that bad. I might take a smaller seam allowance. That might give me enough. I just, I just think that there's not enough to get around like a meaty shoulder like I know I have. If you have narrow shoulders like this girl, then you'll probably be fine. But I know I have a look like meaty shoulders, meaty biceps, you know, so I'm a little bit nervous, but we're gonna, we're gonna do our best, right? And we're gonna get as close as we can, right? It's not perfection. It's as good as we can. And that's enough. That is enough. Okay. So that's what I have to say about pattern adjusting when it comes to fabrication. We're going to come to page seven, supplies, fabric, and measurements. And these are all the things that you're going to need. Um, I'm skipping top stitching thread. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, if you wanted to make like a sportier look and you wanted to do flat belt seams, faux flat belt seams, top stitching thread would be really beautiful. I'm not worried about that on mine um, because I'm using this corduroy. I'm not entirely sure how much it would even show up. So I'm not worried about that on mine, but you do need some fusible interfacing. I ended up using, I ended up using the mid weight woven interfacing from Heat and Bond. I love, 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 love Heat and Bond's interfacing. I've talked about this a thousand times because one, you don't need steam. So you know when you have that issue of using your interfacing and then ends up being smaller and ends up shrinking up your pattern piece, that doesn't happen with Heat and Bond because we're not using water at all. It's just straight up heat. That's all you need to melt the little doodads on the back. Um, I also love it because it acts a lot more like fabric. Can you see how this is technically woven like fabric is and it's not like the papery stuff? That's non-woven. Heat and Bond makes that as well, but I like the woven stuff. So this is the woven. I want to say this is the mid-weight um, because I am using, a, you know, a little bit more of a thicker fabric, not so much summery like they were doing in their example. This is more fall appropriate corduroy. Um if you were doing like a velvet or a denim or anything like that, you're probably going to want a heavier interfacing as well, just to give that collar enough stability. The collar and the facing are the two pieces that are going to get interfaced, okay? Um, fabric wise, medium weight woven fabric such as linen, denim, chambray, batiste, lawn. Rayon Chalet here is not a, med a mid weight woven fabric. I'm not entirely sure why they have that here, but uh, Cupro is also a rayon and so is Tinsel. So I, because of the, t the time of the year, it's like about to be fall, um, I'm going to go with this. Um, it's kind of like a lighter weight, so kind of thinner um, corduroy, but it is corduroy still. So it is, you know, a little bit more substantial than just like a regular cotton is. Um, so this pattern, though, you can use lots and lots of different fabrics. You can use anything from quilter's cotton to, I would say, probably like a... I don't know, five ounce denim, maybe at most, any of those weights, anywhere in there, and you will be just fine. Okay, so that should be everything we need to cover before we actually get sewing. So go ahead, make your pattern adjustments, cut out your um, pattern pieces, cut out your fabric, uh, cut out your interfacing, <laughs> apply the interfacing, go ahead and do that now. I promise you guys, like there's nothing worse than like getting ready to sew this pattern and then having to go get the interfacing and do all of that. Plus the interface pieces, they're not the very first things we need, but they're pretty close. Um, we won't cover them until the second video, but go ahead and just do it now. I promise you, your future self will be so happy. Okay. So here's the cutting layouts, cutting layouts, there was nothing funky with this. If you are working with a corduroy, remember that there's a nap to corduroy. There is a right way and a wrong way to corduroy, and they also need to be the same. So all of your tops need to be your tops. So see how this is upside down? I needed to flip that one over. So I had to, you know, do a little bit of pattern Tetris with this, but um, I was able to get it going, no problem. And then we're going to get started with stay stitching in our next video, okay, you guys? So, um, yeah, lots of homework to do um, before we get to our next video. So go ahead and knock that stuff out. Leave any questions you have in the comments section below. Otherwise, I'm excited to sew this dress with you.